Hey everybody, welcome to Raising Vibrations and uh, you're with Simon today. So today's video, we're going to be looking at the uh, new moon in Gemini, looking at the, the, the chart and kind of just getting some sense of um, what is being initiated through this, form, this new moon. Um, we're also going to look at the Saturn retrograde that's going to be coming up and I also want to take a look at when uh, Mars and Chiron are going to be conjuncting together and also when Venus and Uranus are going to be making a conjunction. So I'm wanting to look at the overall um, pattern that is occurring for the next like two weeks. And I want to show you how significant this uh, Mercury retrograde has been for us in relation to this new moon, plus also the up and coming Saturn return and um, the big Uranus uh, and Venus conjunction and Mars making a connection to Chiron as well. So that's what I want to pack in today's conversation. Um, hopefully we'll deliver some value to you and you can extract something from what I'm sharing and begin to integrate it into your life, help you see where a lot of these experiences may have already begun to play out for you and maybe give you uh, an opportunity to navigate the current energy that we're currently experiencing. So. Before I jump into that, um, I just wanted to kind of give a small little update uh, with uh, me and, and Raising Vibrations. Um, I'm sorry that I haven't been able to post uh, some content over the last, uh, I think, two weeks or so, just after um, the lunar eclipse. Um, I've had retrograde Mercury on my Chiron, so I've been processing some of my own stuff over there. And I've also been having to deal with uh, a bunch of things that needed my attention. So I haven't really been able to find that space to, to fully honor the commitment that it takes to create this content. But um, nevertheless, here we are and we've got uh, this new moon as well as all of these other aspects to, to work and uh, to understand. Um, what else was there that I wanted to address? Yes, really excited um, alongside all of this other stuff that we've been dealing with. Me and Jen have been cooking up a storm and we've got something super cool to uh, share with you over the next couple of weeks. I can't wait. Um, so that's what I want to share with you guys as well. I'll tell you more about that towards the end of this video. Um, yeah, that's it. Let's jump straight into this, this content. Okay, so first things first, um, change, okay, change. I'm sure many of you in different ways are experiencing um, degrees of turbulence in your in your life or seeing it in the world and the the nature of the turbulence probably is uh, direct in direct relation to what it is how the chances are impacting you on your personal life right for those of you that are born sort of 1972 to 1983 you know you got Pluto and Libra um, you've really been feeling this Venus transiting Aries um, uh, effect right because it's been squaring or it's been opposing your Pluto sorry and so this last month has really been intense for that part of that generation um, Pluto and Virgos of course you've got uh, this lunar eclipse that landed on your roughly around your Neptunes so there's been a lot of kind of uh, bumps and bruises that have been going along in terms of not only personally for people but also of course the collective and like I said the, there's been some turbulence there's a lot of uh, change that is taking place, right? So I mentioned this, this, this word change and it really anchors in uh, the current energetic uh, nature, vibration, uh, pattern, however you wish to, to, to label it. But there's a lot of disruption that's taking place. And what's really cool about disruption is that it leads to innovation. Right? It leads to the possibility for a regrowth and change and new direction and clearing out the old. And this has been a theme for a very long time. Right? With Uranus transiting through Aries since 2012, there's been a lot of social change that has been taking place. And we as a society and as a world have really um, you know, seen how the landscape has reordered itself. And, right? And for many of us, we're trying to make sense of certain things. So change has been very evident for us for a long time. But 
This is one of those phases in the great long change <laughs> pattern where it's very accelerated. There's a lot of flux taking place, a lot of um, reorientation. Um, and so uh, what does this kind of mean in the greater context, right? That's kind of what I want to head to. And right now with Saturn in Aquarius squaring the nodes, and for those of you that would probably benefit a lot from a deeper analysis of this, there is a video on my YouTube channel that talks about the nodal axis, the Scorpio Taurus nodal axis. I highly encourage you to go check that out because I go into more depth there with that video around um, the nodal axis. And of course, what Saturn is doing with this nodal axis, right? Saturn is in Aquarius at the moment and it's impacting that nodal axis. So this, this dynamic of change and this acceleration of um, disruption is very much supporting the intention or the, the kind of pattern that the Saturn square the nodes is um, reflecting to us. Okay, so I want you to hold that in your mind in terms of trying to make sense of this cosmic play that we are all going through right now. And for every one of us, this Saturn retrograde, or sorry, this not the Saturn retrograde, but the Saturn square is landing somewhere in your astrology chart. So somewhere in your personal karmic story, you're having the disruption element of this Saturn play out for you, right? For me, it's in the first house. And I can see that, absolutely. So there's this massive change dynamic that is occurring. We're at a, a, a sort of like a peak experience of that, right? Lots and lots of um, disruption occurring, lots of potential for innovation and uh, stepping into freedom ultimately. And part of that process with regards to this, uh, this uh, Mercury retrograde that's taking place. So we have and I'll, I'll put up all the charts for us um, soon. But we have this new moon that takes place in Gemini, nine, uh, nine degrees, if I'm not mistaken. And um, it happens just as Mercury is about to turn direct. So within the next few days, Mercury will move into direct motion, meaning that we are now getting to a point where our capacity to receive new data, to be uh, curious and explore and begin to process new experiences when Mercury comes online it gives us that opportunity to begin to feel fresh with new information right to take in new information and of course that cycle with um, Mercury about to go direct is very synchronized with the new moon in Gemini because Gemini and Mercury are a crossover archetype right we're looking at the same thing here so this theme of uh, rapid change, freedom, this, uh, this theme of the potential for innovation gets beautifully supported by the refreshing, essentially, of our cognitive uh, abilities, our thinking abilities, our curiosity, our, our interest in accessing and processing new data, okay? And the way I want you to see this in your mind's eye is imagine like you're kind of walking along a road or a path and you reach a point where you feel saturated by so much that you've taken in that you can't actually process or digest more information. That's what happens when we have Mercury retrogrades. We reach a point of saturation for three months and then we kind of take a step back. Mercury goes on holiday and says, see you guys, enjoy your technological uh, snafus. Um, and we sit with and digest what's been occurring for the last three months, okay? So let's take a look at what has happened for the last three months. Well, when I went and did a bit of research to find out some dates, what was really fascinating to me is the correlation between Jupiter in Pisces entering Aries, okay? Um, we've got the Venus making a conjunction to Pluto. This is around the 2nd of March, Venus, the planet Venus, was making a conjunction to Pluto and Capricorn. And also what was occurring during this time is that we've also got Mars and Venus moving through Pisces, okay? So, and if I'm not mistaken, I'm not 100% sure, I didn't check this out, but I'm, I'm, I'm wanting to say that, because if I'm just kind of tracking the time, I'm wanting to say that Venus and Mars were also in Aquarius at the time that we were having Mercury um, still in its direct form. So I'm going to back up here for a second. The last time Mercury was retrograde was in February. And so what we're doing is we're tracking since the last Mercury retrograde, 
all the way back to when Mercury went retrograde, right? So this, that last three month phase, whatever happened in that last three month phase, that's what we're processing with this Mercury retrograde. Okay, so you're following me here? Okay, so the significant piece was Jupiter is changing signs. Venus makes a conjunction to Pluto, right? We also have Mars and Venus moving through Pisces. So what I'm trying to point here is that A, Venus uh, through the last like week and a half has been moving through Aries and it's been squaring Pluto, okay? And whenever a planet makes a, an aspect to Pluto, we can know that something has reached the end of a cycle. And so Pluto will eliminate what is no longer alive, what is no longer working for us. It will essentially bring deep complex feelings to the surface for us to process through. And eventually at some point, most of the time, we'll come to a, I'm done with this kind of thing and we'll cut out the energy and we'll begin to heal from that attachment, whatever that may be, and we'll move on with new ways of wanting to relate, okay? So when Pluto and Mercury, sorry, Pluto and Venus conjuncted on the 2nd of March, it was also Venus had a retrograde phase, okay? So Venus has this retrograde phase, and then on the 2nd of March, it finally conjuncts Pluto for the last time, and then it moves ahead. And that is what is called the new phase conjunction, implying that during this recent Mercury like direct phase, we had Venus conjuncting Pluto saying to us, hey, there's a new cycle of values, of interrelating, right? That we are working through. And now when Venus moves into Aries, it creates what is called an opening square, okay? And that opening square, crisis in action, the way that it gets experienced or felt is that we take two steps forward with something that we've just been learning, we're trying out, right? Maybe a new self-image, that you are beginning to heal. You are maybe taking certain steps in a direction and this is healthy for you. And that would have come around when Mercury, sorry, Venus and Pluto were conjuncting. So right now with this opening square, Venus in Aries has said, right, everything that you don't want, that's, that's healthy for you, that's good for you, I want you to throw it off, okay, okay. So this, this, uh, this Pluto square with Venus over the last two weeks really set up and teed up this Mercury retrograde and particularly this new moon. Because again, the context here is allowing ourselves to get rid of any pre-existing narratives or storylines or truths or uh, messaging that we hold within our lives that no longer support or reflect where we are internally. So as you're kind of growing and evolving and allowing yourself to change certain things in your life, you will come across information that will say to you, hey, try this out or do this. And then you begin to integrate it and apply it. And that kind of changes your inner relationship. And that's what's fundamentally been happening here is that we've all been deeply processing what we want to resonate with, what we feel is what we want to carry with our lives or not. Some people have realized, you know, this idea of self um, abandonment as an example has been deeply detrimental and that they want to heal that process and so now they value things like saying no as an example when somebody says hey do you want to do this and they don't want to do it but just to be kind to the other person they'll say yes yes I'll do it right and this is kind of mechanism of self-abandonment so that's one example it's like choosing new responses and allowing yourself to feel more uh, free in being able to be yourself Okay, so that's kind of the goal here is this idea of becoming more free and aligned with yourself. So this Mercury retrograde that's about to go direct in synchronicity with this new moon is essentially pointing to where we feel, where we are now able to go, hey, I've made a bunch of decisions in my life. I feel like I want to free myself of things that are weighted behind me that I don't want to carry anymore. And I want to take it off. I want to peel it off. I want to say, no to certain things, I want to be open to other things, Mind, whatever that may be for you personally, right? This is where you, you self-reflect here. And you let this energy like wash away what is not essentially healthy for you, right? It's kind of the big deal here. So there is change that's occurring. It's right in front of us. It's there. Sometimes we feel that we want to step into it. Sometimes we feel afraid because we're uncertain about what that may be. And so the question is, what's changing in your life? So what feels outdated and what is changing in your life? Like notice those two patterns and recognize how they've been occurring for you in your life, okay? 
and that's this is like a big message of this this new moon is we're at a point where one aspect of it is culminating right we're we're getting rid of certain messaging that we don't want to carry with us anymore right this is very much about what this this mercury retrograde is about this new moon comes in and says okay let's start a new cycle right and then mercury goes direct a few days later and this all ties in with the eclipses okay you know that we've recently had this lunar eclipse and solar eclipse in scorpio taurus right solar eclipse in taurus lunar eclipse in, in uh, scorpio and of course the narrative is very much about three things you've heard me talk about it which is self-empowerment which is self-directed conscious interaction with your life okay and to see where things can where you can experience deeper connection to what is meaningful for you okay so you may notice within yourself that you really want to do something exciting and creative or something but you notice that something stops you from getting in the way self-doubt uh, internal judgment, a part of you that perceives that you're maybe not good enough, etc. Whatever things that could be in your way. It doesn't have to be that, but whatever that's in your way. And so this, this energy right now, these eclipses want to bring these deep emotions to the surface and say, how is this supporting you? Like, what's the impact in your life regarding where you feel that you can't cross over a threshold? And this, this lunar eclipse in, in Scorpio is really kind of boiling it up and saying like, hey, <laughs> you know, where do you notice your limitations? Where is there an opportunity to confront those limitations and grow past the threshold, right? So very confronting energy. And like I said, this, this lunar eclipse and solar eclipse in Scorpio Taurus, um, we're entering a peak experience in relation to these um, this, this nodal axis of North Node in Taurus, South Node in Scorpio. We, we're entering a peak phase activating experience, okay? So we, we had the lunar eclipses set the stage for the next six months. And now this new moon comes in and says, free yourself of, of self-betrayal, self-abandonment. Free yourself of things that you don't recognize are meaningful and purposeful to you. Free yourself of it. Throw it off, right? And to, to varying degrees... You can do this, right? Some people will just say, no, I don't want to do this job anymore. And other people will just say, you know what? I'm going to choose to eat and have a healthier routine, right? The spectrum is dependent on where we are individually, but this is kind of the idea here, right? And so what wants to move forward in your life? That's the message with the uh, lunar and solar eclipses. What wants to move forward in your life? Okay, so... What you don't want to carry anymore, right? Okay. What's changing and what, and, and what I said here was what wants to move forward in life. So there's an energy of wanting to push you into a different space. There's an energy that's reminding you of something that's changing. And there's an energy of saying, come on, like, don't let that come with because that's not relevant anymore, right? It's, it's dead weight. Okay. So this is kind of the eclipse pattern. And so when the Saturn retrograde comes online, so let's take a look at the Saturn retrograde. Right. So Saturn retrograde comes online and um, this is like, what, I think the 6th or the 7th? Um, it's, yeah, the 6th, the 6th of June, it comes online. And so if you look in the chart, you can see there's Saturn in Aquarius. Um, and then you've actually got the moon in Leo. Like, how cool is this, right? The moon is in Leo in direct opposition to Saturn. And then you have this north and south node that's sitting in Taurus, Scorpio, right? I've highlighted it there. And notice what happens here. We've got a T-square activated with this, uh, this moon. We've got all of those planets in Taurus over there with Uranus. We've got Saturn sitting in Aquarius there. And like I said, South Node in Scorpio and then the moon in, in Leo. And so this, what you're looking at right now, essentially, is the activating agent for the next five months, particularly, and it's telling us exactly what we're going to process through with these lunar and solar eclipses that are coming here. And it's also telling us what is essentially going to grow in us around our sense of value and our sense of values and what we consider to be important in our lives, what we want to actualize in our lives, what we want to cultivate in our lives. And also it's bringing with this new moon energy of curiosity and openness and learning something new and, and exploring something new, okay? 
That's like the big key here. This is kind of the activating agent here for the next five months. So it's like throwing off stuff, right? The work, like, what are we going to throw off? And it's super empowering. It's like, it's super, super empowering. You know, individuality, creative self-actualization, like what is the, what is your personal path? And that can be, it doesn't have to be something, it's just you and what you are here to, to witness, experience and, and live through. That's what I mean by that. Okay. And so if we take a look at this um, screen here, we've got Venus, Uranus and Chiron and Mars. And I thought this was really fascinating too. And this I call the vortex point, right? The previous uh, chart that I showed you was freedom, right? The freedom to be you in a sense, right? The freedom to, to, to get rid of the things that are holding you back from, from, not a, from missing out on, on the thing that really aligns you. Like, just do that. Okay, so this one over here is called the vortex point. And the reason why I say this is because, A, now we have the moon approaching the south node. So another trigger point regarding the nodal axis. And you'll see that Mars is approaching Chiron, okay, in Aries there. And then we also have Uranus and Venus making a conjunction, okay? So this Venus-Uranus conjunction is going to be a bolt from somewhere that is going to be felt. It's going to, it's going to deeply shift the paradigm within the context of our, your individual life and the collective. So this is a really powerful transit that's coming up, right? This is the 11th of June. And this vortex point is massive because it's it's going to again set the tone and the trend for what is essentially taking place in the next five months not only with saturn retrograde but also pluto retrograde and also these lunar and solar eclipses that we've been going through right so this vortex point is activating uh the the need for freedom like to, to push out of the boxes and the constraints and the the ideas about what you you know it's just you're gonna we're gonna feel that restriction and then that jupiter and aries is gonna be like come on like grow out of it like like push back like this is this is how that energy is gonna feel and you and you want to you're gonna be really really become aware of the need for for stepping out of that space right really stepping out of something and, and getting into what really feels like you as opposed to wearing the mask and this is the piece i want to kind of um synthesize over here is that for a very long time we are conditioned or we grow up with uh, a way of understanding the world and for a, for a big part of that in order to protect our childlike innocence from the impressions of the big world we create certain masks that we need to wear in order for us to um, participate in the world and one of the major reasons why we do that is because of fear of vulnerability, right? Fear of being exposed, fear of being criticized, judged, uh, unseen, um, struggle to be authentic, right? And so this type of energy at the moment wants to, wants to push out any false identities, any false parts of you that no longer reference or reflect the, the life force that is essentially inside of you, right? This one's going to push it to the surface and say, let it go, let it go. And we do this, we do these, these personality kind of masks because if we experience the impact of whatever we may feel vulnerable to, we, um, we, don't, we don't feel that impact because it's a, it's a dead persona, right? So this is an invitation for us to understand that we're human beings, to understand that we're navigating this place, trying to figure things out. And if there's something that you really want to do that's burning in your soul and you, 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 stop yourself from doing it because of what ifs or self-criticism or judgment or doubt or whatever or you've got this amazing you know you want to participate in something you want to be free to be the version of yourself that knows that it's hiding in the shadows because that part of you may not necessarily be accepted in the whatever the, whatever the reason what is the story we tell ourselves right this energy wants to push it to the surface and say uh uh-uh. let go of it let go of it let go of it and we will feel you will feel this polarity between the death of something that is either your sense of truth or the death of the false self in a way, okay? And this kind of leads me into what I'm talking about with regards to me and Jen cooking something up um, and very excited about it, to be honest. So 
what's become very clear to us and apparent to us on this on this process is because we have tended to live a way where things like self-abandonment, self-betrayal, things of wearing masks, etc., growing into a world that has very boxed us in and said, okay, this is what you should be, or this is what's, you know, for your best interest. But you've never kind of sat back and said, well, what does it mean to me? What does freedom mean to me? What does, and that's a good question. Like I could propose it to you. What does freedom actually mean to you? Right? Because we, people have different interpretations and feelings towards that. Freedom for somebody can mean just being able to sit and grow potatoes. <laughs> To another person, freedom can be the ability to wake up at 11 o'clock in the day because they're a night owl, as an example. Like, this is the energy here, right? And so how do we cultivate that? But because we haven't lived in that space for a long period of time or cultivated that way of being, a lot of the time we arrive at this point and we're like, okay, we've thrown it off, we've thrown it off. That's the Chiron and Aries piece, the Chiron and Aries Mars conjunction. We throw it off, we're like, yeah, I'm here. And then we go, now what? Because that space has never been explored before. It's never, it's never, we've never kind of like gone, ha, ah, what do I do with myself in that sense? And so um, in order for there to be a continuation of that process, a lot of the work that me and Jen do and a lot of this over here is to kind of promote this, this process of allowing ourselves to begin to explore who we are and what's our freedom and what values, etc. So um, what we're cooking up is something really, really cool. We are uh, calling it the Aquarian Life. And essentially what this is going to be is an opportunity to begin to explore the individuated state and version of yourself. So we're busy doing something in the background over here and we're really excited about it. Uh, this is going to deeply serve those that are at that point in their lives where they're going, hey, there's something we've arrived, I've arrived, I've arrived, I've thrown it off, but now what? Like, who am I? How do I navigate that space? So that's the kind of meet that at this point in time. And these transits bringing us this energy to, to consciously work with it is perfectly succinct. So um, if you're interested in wanting to know more about that process, what we always do is we've got a wait list in the description beneath this video, you'll see there's a link to uh, click on it. So all, we, all you need to do is just put your email on the wait list and we will then deliver more information to you as we get more clarity on how that works and um, that's how you'll stay in contact up to date with the process and yeah we're really excited about it um, in many ways because we know that this is the time like there's a lot of work about transformation but this is the time like this is the the time where it's a collective movement of awakening so really excited about that um, so thanks very much peeps this is where i'm going to end the conversation today as always, I love you and thank you so much for tuning in with your attention. And I hope that this gave you value and purpose uh, in terms of saying, okay, now I can apply this to my own life. Um, so if you thought this was valuable, like I always say, make sure that you subscribe to the channel if you're new, share it with people um, that you think are gonna get value from this process. Let the algorithm know that this was a good video by doing that whole thumbs up thing. And finally, if there's a little feature that has been granted to Raising Vibrations, which is called thanks. And I wanted to share that if you thought that this was vid video was valuable to you in a way and you want to contribute, you click on the thanks button. And what it actually does is you can kind of give a certain amount of, I don't know, um, like $5 or something. And you, you, I don't know what the exact word is. But it's, yeah, you, you contribute in some way and you also get to write a message, write a comment. And what YouTube does is it actually says, hey, this, this person really liked your video. They wanted to show their appreciation and he has also their message. So if you feel open to that and you want to try that out, that would be awesome. As always, it gives me an opportunity to continue to create this content. Um, and yeah, let me know what you thought about it as well. All right, my friends, thank you very much. Take care. Bye.